Welcome back everybody to the Texans franchise on Madden 21. Here in the 2030 season, we find the Texans with a 5-4 record and a matchup against the Tennessee Titans. We just watched a division matchup against the Jaguars, and we've already swept both Jacksonville and Indianapolis. Earlier in this season, we did lose a game to Tennessee, so another big division game is on the schedule this week, and it's our last division game, period. We don't have uh, good scheduling logic here to make sure there's always one in week 17. So we're going to watch this Titans game today and then sim maybe one or two games depending on how things are going and if I think we should speed up the pace. We went at a very fast pace last episode so we've made a ton of progress already. And here to refresh your memory on the stats, let's go through them. But we haven't been playing at quite the level we did a year ago. The defense appears to have jumped up in the standings from the last time we saw it there. Shadon Roseman, 15 touchdowns, 6 interceptions, still putting up really good numbers this season. They are going to be a bit down, however. Compared to last season, he is throwing for 52 less yards per game. I think you can sum that up with the loss of Devin Macklin, we certainly didn't get better by losing him. But we also have been running the football a lot better with Robert Penn. His resurgence this year has helped the offense a lot. He's 29 years old and he's putting up better numbers than he did a year ago. And more rushing yards per game than he's had in five years. At the same time, we have some great receivers. Cassius Fowler's taking a step forward this year. George Ingram is still awesome. Same with Amari Jones. And Paul Sears, I think he's going to be just fine. He's just not going to put up huge numbers as the fourth option here in the passing game. I think we all have a lot of faith in this defense. The pass rush, as always, is getting a lot of sacks. Denzel Ward, three interceptions. Marcus Childs has two. So let's see what Tennessee has in store today. Doug Ward is the quarterback. I don't know if we've seen him play before, but he's got superstar development. He's in his second season. He's pretty accurate, just not so much on the shorter throws. 75 speed, not going to leave the pocket a ton, but a very strong arm can definitely attack downfield. At running back, the Titans have DeMarquise Barnett, ninth year out of Boise State, 83 overall. Looks like he's been kind of a running back two throughout his career. Some lower averages. What are the ratings like here? 91 speed, 82 break tackle, 94 change of direction. Not a bad skill set. Travis Finnegan is the leading receiver. He is their starting tight end. Casey Bushrod, 5, 44, and 5. Here are the top players on the team. Quan Basket at corner, 26 years old, 94 overall. Larry Hayden, 91 overall, outside linebacker. Nolan Singh at right tackle. So here's our matchup today. Final division battle of the season. If the Titans win... They will have the tiebreaker over us. They'll temporarily be in first place. Houston trying to move to 6-4 on the season. Hoping for a strong finish to this year. Doug Ward is under center in his second season. Hand off to the outside and a good run here for Barnett. Gain of 7. Demarquise Barnett, this time will be met by Kurt Reiner, and it's a loss on the play. Third and four. It's Thursday Night Football. We're going with the Color Rush uniforms here. It's third and four. Tennessee with a deep ball here, and that's going to draw the penalty. There was a lot of contact there. Pass interference called on Denzel Ward. So Tennessee across midfield. And now Ward gets his hand on that one. It's incomplete. Here's third and ten for Tennessee. We have some motion. Ward, Beverly's there. Pass caught. We'll see if that's close enough to attempt the field goal as again they go after Denzel Ward. 54-yard attempt. 
Do you have enough to get it there? Plenty! But it's wide left and no good! Houston takes over. Their day starts at the 44-yard line, and Robert Penn will make the reception. I want to see Robert Penn continue this great season he's put together. He'll run this one inside. Penn gets first down yardage. Amari Jones in motion. They'll flip it to him. He gets outside. That's a solid gain of seven. I love that jet sweep pass. Always have. Second and two, Penn, not enough, no, it's loose, recovered by Tennessee at the 45. You'd hope for Penn to do a bit better there, giving Roseman some extra time. But Becton is beat again, ultimately. It has not been a great season for him. And Tennessee is set to take over a huge turnover. I think we may have to have the conversation at the end of the year of if Makai Becton is still a good fit for this team because he's allowing sacks. I get the ratings are really good, and he does have good games, and he's good in the running game, but is his play worth that high salary? At the 40, they'll run it inside. That's going to go for a first down to Marquise Barnett. I like these uniforms for Tennessee. These are the 2015 Color Rush uniforms. I didn't mess around with their new style uniforms to see if we could basically replicate the Color Rush effect, but I like these a lot. We'll pitch it outside now. Good block on the edge, but then Barnett trips, I think, over Ward on the ground. I have no clue how he made that tackle, but it's third down. Tennessee in field goal range. Already missed once. Doug Ward. There's Ferris. The pass floats outside incomplete. That'll bring out Wyatt Carlisle. This one's a bit closer. We know he has the strong leg. 49 yards. Right hash. Low line drive. This kick is good. Gotta protect the football better. Houston takes over, trailing by three. Better protection, and the pass is hauled in by Ingram. Blitz sent on second down. Caught! Nice job, Sears. When the ball's gotta come out quick, your quarterback has to be able to depend on you. Good play there. Five and change to play in the first quarter. Caught now by Jones for a minimal gain. From the empty set, the pass is away quickly now. Cassius Fowler picks up the first down. Going for that quick, efficient passing game. And now a play fake. Nice job, Watson. Roseman complete. Fowler, gain of nine. A little bit worried, though, about that edge rusher at the top of the screen as Penn takes us to the Tennessee 38. Not super familiar there with 55, but he's been in the backfield a couple times. New set of downs for Roseman. Penn takes it to the right, dishes out the stiff arm to get four yards. All right, let's take a look here at Devin McBride. They have him as a 75 overall. With these ratings, he should not be overwhelming Makai Becton at all. But 90 finesse moves is really good. That is a good standout skill, even if the other ones are low. I think with that kind of skill set, you'd expect very hot and cold play from a player like McBride. And he's starting off the game pretty hot. Roseman into coverage! Watch out! Almost picked. He wanted Sears. 2.40 on the clock here. Good job by Fowler. A penalty marker down. And if you're Tennessee here, you definitely want to back us up. Or not, and let us attempt the field goal. Ryan Ford, 51 yards to tie the game. There's gotta be some wind. 
There has to be. We know Ford has a strong leg. Tennessee football at the 36-yard line, and it's Barnett met by Reiner at the 34. Two yards a carry. Doug Ward heads to the air and is intercepted on the overthrow. Dre Tatum. He's done it again. The playmaker Dre Tatum with another interception, second of the season. Got to capitalize on mistakes. Tennessee going double A gap here. High snap delivered to Penn and he earns that one yard. Roseman second down, tight coverage, but caught by Jones, first down. Play fake now to Penn, got a double team there with Becton, and Fowler will take us inside the 20. Roseman now, nine for 11, not challenging this defense downfield. Everything's been safe and underneath for the most part. Penn straight ahead, nice stop, it'll set up third and two. On to the second quarter. Heading to the air. Floated out of bounds. I think we had a check down or somebody open underneath, but settling for a Ryan Ford field goal attempt instead. The game is tied. Doug Ward has just 11 passing yards to this point. Tennessee takes over at the 25. To Marquise Barnett, bounces off the Hillhouse tackle. Carr stops him at the 28. Trying it again, Barnett. Nowhere to go. Dre Tatum's in on the stop. He is everywhere. And trying to get off the field. It's third down and eight. They'll send four at Doug Ward. Carr's there. Underthrown and intercepted. Kurt Reiner the other way. He will score a Houston pick six. That's why we build up this front four. I want plays like that. Tennessee down by seven. There's even more pressure. Allen Beverly. Doug Ward has opened two of eight, 11 yards, two interceptions. You never know when our defense can just take over a game like this, but if you are a Vikings fan, you understand how dominant these matchups can get. Because every game the Vikings have played for the last five years, they've been pretty much overmatched in this fashion. And every game against the Packers and Bears is harder than it should be. Intercepted once again! Taken away, Marquise Brown, 20th career INT. One of my favorite free agent pickups of the entire series. Being overmatched up front, I think, is the fastest way to lose a game. Tennessee's experiencing that early on. Far from over, though. This is a first down on the reception for Dante Hairston. Roseman back to pass on second down. On the outside, caught again by Fowler. He's putting together a great season, and thankfully he has stayed healthy this year. Should have a chance to put up like 800 yards or something, maybe even more. And I'm not sure how exactly the tight ends can take a step forward with development. I'm not sure if the game looks at all the tight end stats and then picks the top performers to get the breakout. Because that would be the ultimate hope here for Fowler. Because he needs to get the star dev if he wants to become a great tight end. Rosemond, third and nine. He'll dump it outside to Penn. That's a good open field tackle. As Houston will bring out the field goal team again. Houston goes up 13-3. Tennessee takes over at the 22 and Doug Ward throws incomplete. They will not call Russell there for P.I. Montrell Russell getting some more playing time now after I fix the depth chart issue. Ward complete now. They go after Russell again. This time it worked. Trying to go play action. 
Doug Ward throws it complete again, targeting Montrell Russell in the base defense. Not obviously playing when we go nickel or dime, but he's getting snaps. Six minutes to play in the first half. Demarquise Barnett, first down. New set of downs for Ward, starting to get a rhythm here as he completes right in front of Denzel Ward. Three first half interceptions though for Doug Ward. They'll try to keep it on the ground, but we've taken away that rushing attack from the very beginning. Empty set on third down, more pressure, Ward misses, incomplete, what a mess for Tennessee. Houston's got it again, and Roseman finds Penn. Looked like he saw that at the last moment, but he makes the catch, gain of seven. Now looking for the conversion. Roseman on target, it's Amari Jones. Two minutes to go in the first half, and the pass is just coming out immediately from Roseman. Again, he finds Paul Sears, second catch of the day. A minute 40 on the clock. They're trying to get aggressive here at the pass rush. And Roseman completes it shy of the sticks. Tennessee gets it back. They can try to put together a two-minute drill, but that would require some completions and big pickups. And they haven't been able to do that all half. Doug Ward really struggling. Jabari Carr with the pressure. Overthrown. This is a really, really bad performance. He's completed one-third of his passes. Three interceptions. On third and ten, trying to run it. What good is that going to do? Can Houston do anything else in this first half? They get it back. The deep ball's caught. Ingram inside the 15. 40 yards. Clock is moving, though. That wasted a lot of time there. I would have called the timeout. You lost 20 seconds. First and 10. Roseman will complete it inside the 5. You call the timeout there. And now don't screw it up. Throw it into the end zone. You cannot pass it in front of the end zone. Okay, please. Three yards away. Trying to go up three scores before half. Roseman. He gets it away. Off the crossbar. Try it again now. Don't go I formation. I don't care if it's a play fake. This is the wrong formation. Roseman. Watson's not open. And now you got to throw it away. Not the ideal way to end that drive, but hey, a chip shot field goal here in a game we are dominating. Houston leads 16-3. We're on to the second half now. Big lead for Houston, but Tennessee will make a big play. It's Bennett on the sack. I know we're dominating this game, but the scoreboard says Tennessee is still in it, so can't get too comfortable. Roseman third down and 16. He's better protected, but still won't take a chance. Tennessee football and a solid run to begin the drive for Barnett. They had pretty good field position, so a chance to go and cut into this 13-point lead. They'll run it inside again. Barnett running through Russell, first down. It's Ward on second and 10, trying to go up top with it. Out of room at the sideline and well covered by Marquise Brown. Doug Ward now 6 for 20 in the air. Has to get inside the 38 here and they'll run it. Is that because they call it 4 down territory? Wow. You can't run it there if you're not willing to go for it. What are you doing, Tennessee? We will take over inside the 10. Or at the 13. Whoa, trying to set up a screen here for Robert Penn. That didn't work. 
Tennessee trying to get another stop here in the third quarter. It's third down and seven. Four on the rush, and Roseman finds the open man. Cassius Fowler cashing in. It's a handoff. Robert Penn having some issues getting going in this game. He's up to 31 yards on the day. It's been a bit more pass heavy today for Houston, and that's probably the way it needs to be. This is third and 11, and the Titans will get the pressure on Rosemond, and they're going to end this drive. Tennessee still trailing 16 to three. They have it here on third down from the 38. Beverly's there. This ball comes out at about 400 miles per hour and it is well overthrown again by Doug Ward. It's become a field position battle in the third quarter. Houston set to take over now at around the 20 yard line. Nice effort up to the 23. A play fake for Rosemond, and on the move, getting it out to Watson. He stepped out, only got seven. Ingram is the motion man on second down. Nice pickup by Watson. That's caught again. Cassius Fowler on his way, perhaps, to a 100-yard day. Handoff going to Robert Penn. And again, he'll be losing yardage. He's under two yards per carry. Roseman heads to the air on third and 12. He'll get the pass away. He wants the big one, and it's caught! Sears inside the five! I have no clue how he came down with it. It's a 50-yarder for the rookie. Unbelievable. I love when this team takes shots downfield. We have great 50-50 receivers. And now, perhaps we can count on Sears to make plays like this? Roseman barely gets the pass away, but he is rewarded at the end. Robert Penn into the end zone as Houston caps off the drive, increasing their lead. 22-3. And they'll go for two, already up three scores. Houston looking for a very important win, and they are getting very close to that. Doug Ward with Tennessee down 21. He'll let it fly! It's intercepted by Tevin Tyson! All Houston in this one. What's happening to Doug Ward? Looking at his ratings, he's supposed to be like a solid up and coming franchise quarterback. And he's just had the worst possible game today. Here's first and 10 for Shadon Roseman. Caught again, Sears tripped up, perhaps saved a touchdown. Roseman gets it away again, caught. And Hairston is brought down at the three. All right, really trying to put this game away now. Third quarter coming to a close. Robert Penn, touchdown, number two. This one, I believe, is done. There we go, a nice run from Robert Penn, padding the stats here in the final minutes. Houston's going to go on though to a dominant win and they're on their way to winning the division championship if they just don't fall apart here down the stretch. Already two big sweeps and now we'll get a split against Tennessee and we'll see where that's able to take us. But not too bad if you can go 5-1 inside of your own division. I expected us to have a much more competitive game today. I still cannot believe how poorly Doug Ward played. He didn't do anything well. His accuracy ratings I thought were decent, but his accuracy played way worse than I expected. His decision making wasn't very good. Wow. I'm sure we'll see some better games from him in the future, but 
That's got to be the worst he's ever played. He ended up with 41% completion percentage, 4 interceptions. Roseman, no touchdowns and no interceptions, but 318 yards. Robert Penn scored twice from inside the 5. Cassius Fowler, 91 yards on the day. Paul Sears with 87. And on defense, one sack here for Jabari Carr, but four interceptions. It's a tie now at the top of the division, but of course we have that tiebreaker over Indianapolis. Houston now 6-4. We get to keep upgrading Shadon Roseman. Let's go with more Scrambler now. We get Awareness plus 2, Throw on the Run, Short Accuracy, Break Sack. More upgrading here for Adrian Payton, still putting all the points into zone, but eventually I'll want to get him a little bit of tackling too. Gotta love what we're seeing this year from Cassius Fowler. It's hard to cover him down the field, and he's making a lot of big passes in that intermediate to deep range. One thing we never checked on in the previous video was contracts. So here are the contracts we have to think about for next season. Justin Johnson, do we bring him back? Jabari Carr, how do we make this all work? Kurt Reiner's deal is up. Obviously Denzel Ward, then Randy Wallace, Alan Beverly, Amari Jones, there's too many. Tevin Tyson, Leslie Good. This is the ultimate contract year. I really don't even know where to begin with it. Especially with so many players here who are going to regress and you should wait on. But if you do, you're giving yourself one shot at negotiating with so many players. Wow. There are so many big decisions to make this year. The Texans keep on winning in week 12, their fourth in a row as they defeat the Buffalo Bills 40-24. Shadon Roseman did find the end zone this time four times. Josh Allen sacked six times in this game. Robert Penn, 82 yards on the ground. George Ingram, 78 yards. Paul Sears, three touchdowns. Starting to pick up the production here late. And Russ Watson. He catches a touchdown. What happened here on defense? Sacks for Beverly, Hillhouse, Ferris, Johnson, Reiner, and Perkins. Perkins also had a pick. Same with Denzel Ward. Big injury decision here for Leslie Good. We're not going to rush him back. Instead, giving the extra experience to Stephen Brown. Although, once he's healthy again, Good's going to start. The winning streak is snapped to end the episode as Dallas beats Houston 24-14. They actually played a good defensive game against us. It's our old quarterback, backup Caleb Baker, now a starter. Roseman, two touchdowns, one pick. Not as much on the ground in this game for Houston. And obviously not enough in the passing game. Just two touchdowns in this one. So the four game winning streak is snapped. Not a huge issue. Still a nice game for Justin Johnson. And that brings us to 7-5 on the year. Tying us for first place with the Colts. The Titans are still behind us. And then Jacksonville at 5-7. Next week, we take on the Cleveland Browns. This might be the game we end up watching. We have four games here in the AFC. And we're taking a tour of the AFC East, I guess, where there's no standout team. So it's not like a super daunting schedule the rest of the way. Hopefully, we can at least win three of these games and go back to the postseason. But we do have an injury to check on. Leslie Good is coming back and going on to the injury report. No! Dre Tatum broken collarbone. Seven weeks. That would mean his only shot of playing again this year would be in the Super Bowl. And we're counting on him to help get us there. That is a massive... Massive loss for this defense. Who replaces Dre Tatum now? I think.
think probably Zach Jones would go to that second linebacker role. But either way, it's a significant loss. That's a tough one to overcome. It's next man up for the Houston Texans next time as we try to punch our ticket to the postseason. Thanks for watching the episode, everybody. Hope you enjoyed the action today. Leave your thoughts down below in the comment section. And if you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel. I'll see you all next time with more of the Houston Texans franchise. Have a great day.